All right, getting started a little late today. I unloaded 150 bales of straw this morning, so that's a nice little Saturday paycheck. And I'm sure the jack post down in the basement appreciated it because, well, let's just say, let's just say they're averaging 40 pounds a piece. That's damn near 6,200 pounds gone out of the barn at 154 bales that we got out. So. And I came down and after I did it and measured it, I think the barn, just getting that weight out of it, I think it went up a sixteenth of an inch, I think. But uh, anyhow, I got some stuff we're gonna work on this weekend down here. Um, first things first, I have not looked at this concrete since we poured it last weekend. So you're gonna see it. For the first time, I'm gonna see it. Look at that. Hopefully this stuff isn't. Now it's just on top of it. Good deal. Still, still got some, still got some drying to go, but. Hopefully, by next weekend, look out, Teeter. By next weekend, I'd like to get the post setting in here. Um, won't put, obviously, won't put any weight on them. But, uh, well, actually, we'd only be able to get this post set, which is fine because this is the side with all the weight on it. But, got to get this side set and get the barn setting on the post so that I got these jack posts because then we got to move down there and jack that side of the barn up about an inch and a quarter inch and a half so we can get dimensions to make the posts for that side so that's a shitty part because I don't want to go out and buy more jack posts because once I'm done down here really don't have a need for them anymore and the little bit of work that I will still need jack post down here for possibly two is going to be plenty and those things are too damn expensive to just have laying around so um but that looks good um so we're still just kind of at a waiting game I still need to and everything's probably dry enough now that I can do the grinding I need to do on that block and the grinding I need to do down here on this mortar to get everything blended in and I can probably throw a wire brush on the uh, grinder and clean up that that mortar joint through there a little bit. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The main project today is I want to is I want to get these. Uh, I want to get this trim pulled off the rest of the way, at least down to where that door track starts. And I wanna get measured up and get the siding sawed off. And for now, I'll probably just run a screw. I could probably get away with just every other board because that stuff, shiplap, I think. Yeah, that shiplap, so don't need to necessarily do every board. But basically, I just need to run some screws in it to hold it for now so that it can't go anywhere and um i want to get it gonna have to brush or wire brush it and get the shit cleaned off of it once we get get it cut up where it's gonna be and then i think um got we're gonna put linseed oil on it to help protect the beam from any for any further rot i'm hoping i can put it in a uh, pump sprayer and spray it on um Hopefully it's not too thick for that. We'll find out. I'd say I could cut it with diesel fuel, but um, I don't really want to go soaking a beam in diesel fuel because it's kind of flammable. Um, well, linseed oil is flammable, but it's not nearly as flammable as diesel fuel. Um, 
but anyhow, uh, so I'm just going to put screws in it to hold it temporarily. And then when we put in the new treated, whatever size board I end up with in there, we'll know once I get it cut off, how big we can go. Once we put that in there, then, um, we'll on the top of the new board, we'll put a Z bend and some flashing and tuck the flashing up underneath the siding and it'll come out over the uh, new trim board and go from there if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So that's the main thing I want to get done today because I got to, it's probably going to take a minute to get all that done. Um, but before we can get into that, yesterday my stone got delivered. But uh, they brought he brought it in on a frameless dump trailer, and he couldn't get too far off the road. So I mean he got off he got off the road, but not very far. So I'm gonna bring the mini up here and try to get some of that shit back away from the road a little bit more. Um, although it worked out because we'll have to move part of the pile out of the way. But I was hoping he didn't dump it right here in the middle of the driveway because. Once we get done hauling what we need to get hauled inside of the barn, the rest of that, like I said, is going to go to start building the driveway between the road and the concrete pad. And going to start at the road because that's the worst spot to drive in and out of. But I got to get the stone out of there. Got to get dirt dug out, get some, get that crushed rock and, or crushed concrete and rocks and everything we dug out of there. And put that down for base and then put the limestone on top of it so we got some dirt work to do before we can lay the limestone down and i was hoping the whole pile wasn't sitting right in the middle of where i need to go so my dirt settled in i need to shovel some more in here i just put dirt in for or just put some dirt in the uh joints in here to help hold the concrete now that it's rained on it everything's kind of settled in but anyway i'm gonna go get the mini started and we'll do that real quick and then we'll come over here and then uh since i'm probably not gonna do a whole lot of videoing of this i mean i'm gonna show the steps of the process but i'm not obviously gonna show the whole damn thing and then tomorrow i'm going to probably work on moving my light switch so this is going to end up being a two-day video when it's all said and done but anyhow on to the projects for the day Okay, we can actually get to work on this dang thing. Um, I needed chalk. I needed a chalk line so that I could strike a straight line down the back of the barn there, and I don't have one. Well, I didn't have one, so I went over to Dad's to get his and got over there. And we remembered that last time we used his, the string broke and got all wadded up, and he just threw it away. Um, so I still ended up having to run into town. But while I was over at Dad's, a friend was over there and. A 15 minute job turned into a two and a half hour conversation but you know how that goes so anyway um first thing i'm going to do is we'll get this trim bus or this bottom trim board broke off so that we got a good spot to measure off of and figure out how high we got to go to strike our line and go from there
well getting that off kind of sucked mostly because i had to be careful how i pried because these three top blocks right here those two folds and then that partial window block there are all loose so you couldn't pry on them for fear of pushing them through the wall so probably gonna have to uh pop them guys off at some point and or pop them guys out at some point and re-tuck them back in which we're gonna have a little bit of a project on this anyhow because I need to get some block and tuck this pillar back in at some point oh hey there mr woolly bear Tear. Okay, so if my beam is 10 inches tall, which is what it is, if I go with a treated 2x8 on the bottom, that'll still give me a 2.5 inches of meat on the siding to be able to nail into the beam and get the flashing up underneath and yada, 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 and all that fancy crap. So... How's that look? Just measure it. So I think that's what we're going to do. And go from there. So let me go ahead and get this measured out. Okay. Got it measured off. Got a line snapped. Surprisingly, I got that whole thing in one hit down from that end. I was, I was impressed. And I'm glad I went with the orange high-vis chalk because that stuff shows up perfect. So I'll go grab my skill saw. I guess I'll pull my screws back out. Um, I'll go grab my skill saw and we'll buzz them things off of there. That, look, that looks so much better all nice and straight and even and not all the rotted out, jagged, nasty. That stuff was... Where I cut it, it starts getting firm, but much below that. And it's... I mean, a lot of it's like a sponge. Pretty rough shape. So, next thing I gotta do 
is take a wire brush and I'm gonna bring a grinder down because something a lot of the nails didn't pull out well. The nails that didn't pull out snapped off. They're they're what there's I mean they're down to like wire size. Just little nubbins holding that siding on still. So um take a wire brush real quick and wire brush all the nasty cobweb we dusty whatever the hell's been living under that siding and uh get the nails knocked off and then we can spray it down with some linseed oil hopefully okay um so i'm to the point of putting linseed oil on i tried the uh i tried putting it in a pump sprayer didn't work it can't doesn't have enough pressure to atomize it going through the nozzle so you just get a little stream but so we're going with the five gallon bucket and the big ass paintbrush method um so yeah we'll catch you guys here in a minute although it's going pretty good it's laying it on like that that wood is soaking that linseed oil up like you wouldn't believe i'm laying that stuff on as thick and as i can and you can almost watch it just go right into the wood that stuff's thirsty Alrighty, there we go. That's the first coat on. Um, I'd like to get at least two more on it. So, and then once we get the door and everything on, um, I will probably go in from the underside and do the underside of it and figure out the best way to take the paint off the inside of it um at least directly over the door here which is not going to be fun because if that's the paint that's the same paint that was on it when they put the poster on the door inside it's got fly bait mixed in the paint so it's poison paint which is you know nice so getting that off without dying is going to be fun but uh at least right where the door is you get another couple coats on the bottom and another couple coats on the inside and that linseed oil should pretty much stop any rot that's going on dead in its tracks. So, but we're going to call it here. I'm going to finish cleaning up my mess and we'll catch you guys tomorrow doing a little bit of electrical work. All right, we're getting started on my wiring down here. I spent a fair bit of the morning, although it doesn't look like much, I moved some stuff out of here and moved some stuff around and in the process got sidetracked on a couple other small projects i had to hang in there i hung a new light up in the tool shed and some other odds and ends so this morning's been a little slow going but uh i got dad coming over to try it i, I want some of his i want his input um basically what i think i'm gonna do because everything in this right now is just wired, is two wire cloth braid, I guess it'd be considered 212. Um, which actually you might, I don't know if you can still buy two wire Romex or not. I've never paid attention. But anyway, um, I got 12.3 that I bought when I did some light wiring upstairs several years ago. So what I want to do is get all the lights tied into one switch. Um, because right now this side of the barn is on one switch and that side of the barn's on another switch and it's stupid. I mean, you, just, you flip the switch, you turn all the lights on. I, I don't know why they did it that way. But um, so what I want to do, I think this light socket's going to go away. It's too low. Um, it's not even in line with the rest of them. So this light socket's gonna get sacrificed. I think this is just gonna get turned into, or just be utilized as a junction box. I'm gonna run new wire down that beam. I should be able to, there should, this, this post should be wide enough. I can mount the switch right here to keep it out of the doorway. Um, and then I can run the wire up down that beam. 
over here to my uh, my incoming panel and then come out of the switch into this junction box and tie everything together and then this wire which is the one feeding that half of the barn cut back here and hopefully and come back in and just run two through uh through this uh crimp lug and tie everything together in this box because basically anything i do right now is going to be a band-aid um because when it's all said and done this whole the whole electrical system in this barn needs gutted and redone but it's still in good enough shape to utilize for the time being until that opportunity arises um and i also want to get rid of these light sockets um because they're hanging so low i can just see those getting knocked off moving equipment around down here so i want to get some led light uh, shop light fixtures and actually hang them up in between the floor joists that way they're up above ceiling height and you could probably get away with six six of those things down here two down there two in the middle two down there and you would eliminate a shit ton of wiring down here so but i got dad coming over because i want his input before i get rolling so we'll catch you guys here in a minute actually the very first thing we're gonna do before or while we're waiting for dad to get here is make this here shelf go away because it's annoying Okay, so we got a slightly revised plan, which is why you call dad. Um, still going to eliminate, oh hey. Still going to eliminate this light fixture. Um, and just, this is gonna be a junction box. But the difference is, still going to cut this wire and bring it in here and tie all this together so that all the lights are on one circuit. Still going to, eliminate from here back to the panel because we're not going to need it because that's the feed wire for this side of the the basement and the feed wire for that side of the basement is going to get ripped off all the way back to the panel from here the difference being going to run a hot wire down that beam to the switch and then come out of the switch up across and tie in through this to eliminate backtracking all the way back there and i can eliminate this outlet because i don't need it um it's an unhandy spot for an outlet and it's only for a two-prong cord anyhow so the wire will come out of the switch i don't know if i'll i don't know if i'll just run it across the beams or if i'll go up over down the beam and down the beam just to make it look cleaner but that'll eliminate going up back over and then having a big old wad of wire with and there'd be what one two three four it'd be five wires getting tied together in that box so instead there'll just be four to eliminate some of the jumbled up mess so first things first we'll get our switch box mounted
Okay, I opted to put it on this door jam instead of this door jam because A, I think it's going to be a lot cleaner if I go up this wall, down the beam, over that beam, and into the light fixture rather than jumping across the floor joist. I just, I don't know, it would bug me having it willy nilly out there in thin air. Just my OCD. Um, and over here in this corner, I have no good way because of the wall being right here i have no good way to get my outgoing wire so this one allows me to come in go out the side of the box back up and over so um now that that's in we can run our power wire down kind of neat pulling that wire through you probably saw me pull a lot of shit out of that crack right there um i'm guessing by the way it's sewn together it was a feed bag but uh farm bureau products and you can't really yeah yeah it would have been a feed bag because there's f-e-e-d don't know what kind of feed because that part's missing but that was an old feed sack bet it's not in better shape been in this place for well since 2017 still finding new stuff hidden over there along the main beam rather than all this crap they got tied into the bottom because can't really see it um i did leave a coil of wire down here by the panel that way when the time comes hopefully sometime in the not too distant future to redo all of this um if by chance end up needing more wire for something we got it rather than having to pull a new wire so that's why that is there um but goes up, runs down the beam, and down to the switch. So now we come back out of the switch box and down to here. All right. And wire going to the light circuit is ran. So now we'll get the switch wired in. And then all of that work will be done. And then we'll have to obviously kill the power so that I can make my connection there, make my connection there, and break that connection there, because we don't want to be working with spicy wires, do we? Okay, I got the switch wired up. I just got to put it in the box, but I figured before I close it up, I'd show you. Um, sorry, I, there's no place to set the video camera here in the damn corner and get decent video of it, so I just did it, but um, neutral wire nutted, ground wire nutted, although, there's no ground in this system the way it's wired now so it's just there to look good and then hot jump or hot broke through the switch so put it in cover it up and then we can kill the power and make all of our fancy connections okay so to make all this safe we just do this shazam no more power
So now, um, I wonder if I can put you right here on the old milky expansion. Yeah, kind of can. Maybe, maybe we go, no, well, can't go there. They're just, everything in here is in a corner and there's just no good spot to set the camera. I guess that's as good as you're going to get. Okay, so first thing we can do is unhook these here switches because they're going bye-bye. You can't just slip them off. You gotta pull screws all the way out. Okay, now if we can get, you know, pulled out of here so that they are out of the way. that now neutral I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that ground wire yet I mean I guess there all they did was they got a neutral and a in the ground hook the same lug and that's the one that goes upstairs. I need to get some better wire strippers. I don't know where I got these, but they're just Harbor Freight specials and they are atrocious.
Okay, there's that. Now we just got to do the junction box and tie everything in at that outlet. All right, I got the wire broke off of the circuit over here. The junction box is all wired up. Good thing Dad came up with the idea to come in down there because there's physically not enough room inside of that box for another set of wires going in. It was all I could do to cram the four up in there that I already had. And we're tied in here at this light, so I guess nothing to do but see if we can start a fire. And I gotta remember this thing. There we go. You can take these inserts and pull them out and put them in upside down and that stores the fuse holder but doesn't it kills the power the way the lugs work on it do i got it yeah on is up so that's good so hopefully with any luck at all please work ah yeah i do good it's dumb shit, but I'm still excited about it. Sweet. That is so much nicer, having that switch. Now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to start this thing back up, because it's getting cold in here. It is so much nicer having... That is going to be... I put it... I mean, normally, I think your light switch is somewhere around here, like 36 inches. I put it up a little higher, that way it was less likely to get bumped with anything. Not that you would get anything over in this corner that could bump it, but better safe than sorry. I figure the higher the better, and that's kind of a reasonable height for it, so. Anyhow, I guess now I can demo out the rest of that wire and that's those two switches, and this project will be good. are all demoed out wires all demoed out panel looks a lot cleaner so like I say eventually all this is gonna get redone with a new modern breaker panel but for now this works so I think I'm just gonna be like a regular electrician and leave all my shit around here for the mechanical guys to clean up. Sounds about right. So anyhow, I'm actually gonna get my mess cleaned up and get some tools put away that I don't need because they were down here for this project. And probably call or get go over and get this video together and call her a day, so. That's it for this one, and I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>